Good morning everyone. Today's lecture is on biomedical waste management. Ever seen such sight? Hope you have come across this picture several times. So at the end of this session, learners will be able to classify healthcare waste and list the sources of healthcare waste, define biomedical waste, explain the health hazards of healthcare waste and discuss the biomedical waste management in India with respect to its categorization, segregation, collection, treatment, processing, and disposal. <clears throat> so, first of all, let us classify the healthcare waste. So, healthcare waste can be broadly classified into three categories that is, biomedical waste, general waste, and other waste. I am coming to it what we mean by all these three. So, if we try to distribute the waste generated from the healthcare facility, what we can see is that 85% of the healthcare waste is constituted by the general waste whereas biomedical waste constitutes only 15%. So if we mix up, if we do not separate this biomedical waste from the general waste, what happens? The whole of the waste becomes infectious. So the healthcare waste, the sources of the healthcare waste are the government or the private hospitals, nursing, homes, physicians, clinic, dentist clinic, dispensaries, primary health centers, medical research and training establishments, mortuaries, blood banks, animal houses, slaughterhouses, laboratories, research organizations, vaccinating centers, biotechnology institutions and production units. From all of these, the healthcare wastes are generated. They are the source of the healthcare waste. Then now we move on to the definition of the biomedical waste. What do we mean by biomedical waste? So as per the Biomedical Waste Management Rule 2016, that is under the Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change, biomedical waste means any waste which is generated during the diagnosis, treatment or immunization of human beings or animals or research activities pertaining thereto or in the production or testing of biologicals or in the health camps so this is the addition in the health camps previous in the previous definition this health camp was not there so now in the current definition this in health camps has also been included in the definition of biomedical waste so any waste which is generated during the diagnosis treatment or immunization of human beings or animals or the research activities pertaining thereto or in the production or testing of algicals or in health camps constitutes a biomedical waste so next is the application of biomedical waste management rules 2016. So these rules apply to all the persons who generate, who collect, receive, store, transport, treat, dispose or handle biomedical waste in any form. So being in the hospitals, nursing homes, clinics, dispensaries or the veterinary institutions, animal houses or the health camps, even the first aid rooms of the schools or the forensic lab and research labs to all of these wherever all these persons who are involved in this biomedical waste handling collecting generating receiving storing transporting so they these rules apply to all of these these are the biomedical waste you can see you can very well recognize this in your institution now we move on to what do we mean by general waste so waste other than the biomedical waste which has not been in contact with any hazardous or infectious chemical or biological secretions and does not include any waste shops means these are non-infectious so these are these are the waste which are other than the biomedical waste and that has not come in contact with any hazardous or infectious chemical or biological secretions and it does not include any waste shops so what is there under general waste we have paper cardboards food textile general discharge construction and demolition wastes horticulture waste etc this constitutes to 85 to 90 percent of the total waste then under the other waste we have electronic waste we have used batteries and we have radioactive waste so the healthcare wastes are governed by certain rules so we know biomedical wastes are under the biomedical waste management rules 2016 the general waste comes under the purview of solid waste management rules and construction and demolition waste management rules 2016 Whereas the other waste come under the purview of hazard with another waste rules 2016, e-waste rules 2016, batteries rules 2001 and amendments made thereof 
and the rules under Atomic Energy Act 1962. Mine rate biomedical wastes are the infectious wastes and they adversely harm the health of a person as well as that of the environment. So, who are vulnerable to risks of biomedical waste? The improper biomedical waste management may cause risk to the environment, to the doctors, nurses and patients, to the supporting medical staff, to the general public, to those who are involved in the collection and disposal, as well as the facility staffs. So, what are the risks associated with improper management of biomedical waste? So, nature of risk may include the nosocomial infections, the patients from the poor infection control practices and the poor waste management, the risk of the disease due to the reuse of the untreated biomedical waste or the plastics, risk due to the reuse of expired medicines, risk of infection outside the hospital for the waste handles and other peoples, and then there are risks to the domestic or the stray animals from biomedical waste and the potential propagation of any infection from the animals to the humans. So in this figure you can see the need for the biomedical waste management in the hospitals being in the air pollution, being in the nosocomial infections or the risk to the scavengers, brack pickers as well as to the animals and from animals to humans and the untreated hospital water mixing up with the domestic uh, waters and the risk of the infections like AIDS, hepatitis and tuberculosis. So coming to the specific health hazards of the healthcare waste. So if you talk of the human or the animal or the soil waste, so they possess the hazards of HIV, hepatitis B, virus infection, hepatitis C viral infections, cholera, salmonellosis, anthrax, rabies, tuberculosis, pneumonia and septicemia. With the sharps, there are hazards of hepatitis, B virus infection, hepatitis C virus infection and HIV. With the chemical and pharmaceutical waste, there are the hazards of intoxication. There can be acute intoxication, chronic intoxication, there can be burns, there can be poisoning, dermatitis, conjunctivitis, bronchitis. With the cytotoxic and radioactive waste, there can be cancer, genetic mutation, birth defects, and dermatitis, etc. And particularly all the healthcare waste and more so with respect to anatomical waste, there is a possibility of visual pollution. Or so there may be public sensitivity to the visual impact. Now we move on to the rules and amendments. In 1998, in this, in relation to the biomedical waste management, this rules was passed. That is biomedical waste management and handling rules 1998. And then in the year 2016, this was uh, the new rules came into play. This was superseded by the Biomedical Waste Management Rules 2016. Very recently on 28 March 2018, this is not given in your past textbook. The Biomedical Waste Management Amendment Rules have also come into force since 2018. So this is under the Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change. So let us have a comparison of the Biomedical Waste Management and Handling Rules 1998 with the biomedical waste management rules 2016. So in the previous rules, the, in the definition as already discussed, the CAMS was not particularly included in the definition, but in the recent definition of biomedical waste, CAMS have been included. So in the previous rules of 1998, the occupiers with more than 1000 patients per month or more were to obtain the authorization for this biomedical waste management. But now as per the current rules, Every occupier generating the biomedical waste, including the health camps and IUs required to obtain the authorizations. And in the previous rules, the operator duties were absent, but in the current rules, the duties of the operator have been listed. The previous rules, there were 10 categories. Mind it, in the previous 1998 biomedical waste rules, there were 10 categories, whereas in the 2016 biomedical waste management rules, there are four categories. And the rules in the previous, uh, under the 1990 biomedical waste rules, they were restricted to healthcare establishments with more than 1,000 patients per month. But in the 2016 rules, treatment and disposal of biomedical waste has been made mandatory for all the healthcare establishments. So under the previous rules, there were schedules from 1 to 6, whereas the, uh, under the current rules, all the rules have been concise in the four 
schedules that is schedule 1 to 4 then uh, in the current rule those healthcare facilities where common biomedical waste treatment facility is not available within a distance of 75 km only then the on site treatment is allowed otherwise it is not allowed but previously uh, there was no uh, norms with respect to the distance. Uh, the, there was an option of on-site treatment or the disposal through the uh, common biomedical waste treatment facility. So, next is, in the previous rule, there was no format for the annual report prescribed but under the current rules. There is a format for the annual report. And then the prescribed authority as per the previous rules to the State Pollution Control Board and the Pollution Control Board but under the current rules, there are a list of prescribed authorities and corresponding authorities or corresponding duties are prescribed under the rules. And very important, under the new rules, there is a provision of barcode system for the biomedical waste bags and containers with GPRS enabled system to track from where the waste is going. And uh, under the new rules, the chlorinated plastic bags have been phased out. Whereas in the previous rule, these were not there. So that's about the differences between the previous rules and the current biomedical waste management 2016 rules. Now, let us discuss the major salient uh, features of the biomedical waste rules 2016 as well as the biomedical waste management amendment rules 2018 side by side. So I already discussed in the present rules, the camps has been included. Then there is a phasing out the use of chlorinated plastic bags, gloves and blood bags within two years. That was as per the Biomedical Waste Rules 2016. But as per the current Biomedical Waste Management Amendment Rules 2016, these has to be phased out by 27th March 2019. So this has been extended till this. That is the use of chlorinated plastic bags excluding the blood bags and the gloves has to be phased out by 27th of March 2019. Then the pre-treatment of the lab waste, microbiological waste, blood samples and blood banks uh, should be done through the disinfection and sterilization based on the guidelines prescribed by WHO. Then the establishing a barcode system for the bags of the containers containing a biomedical waste for disposal within one year of notification that is 27 March 2017. This was based on 2016 rules, but in the current amendment as per 2018 guidelines. So there, this uh, deadline has been increased, and that has to be done by 27th of March 2019. This uh, picture shows the barcoded level that has to be obtained till 2019. Then the use of the hydroclave and plasma paralysis for installation of biomedical waste are the environmentally safe method, uh, safer uh, degrad degradation that has been uh, considered and uh, there are proposals to provide training to all its healthcare workers and immunize all the healthcare workers regularly against the diseases like hepatitis B and tetanus. Then there is an addition regarding the monitoring sector where the Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change will review the healthcare facilities once a year. So, now, let us discuss what are the basic steps of biomedical waste management. So, there are several steps. Here we have discussed seven steps. The first one is the segregation of waste at source. And first of all, we segregate the waste at source. And then if there are certain highly infectious or laboratory waste, so they have to be pre-treated or disinfected. And the waste which are collected from the source has to be collected and stored in the color-coded bags or containers or bins. And then these color-coded bags, containers, bins have to be transported. There has to be intramural transportation from the generation site to the central storage site which is present inside the premises. So it reaches the central store there and there is storage at the central facility. And from there, it is then sent to the common biomedical waste treatment facility for the treatment and final disposal. So, mind it. All these are the functions of the healthcare facilities, whereas the treatment and the final disposal is the function of the common biomedical waste treatment facilities. So, all of these has to be accomplished within the 48 hours. 
So now, what are the responsibilities of healthcare facilities for management and handling of biomedical waste? Remember, the biomedical waste should be segregated at the point of generation by the person who is generating the waste in the designated color-coded bin and containers. Then, uh, you have never to miss, never ever mix the general waste with the biomedical waste. And I told you everything. All this complete process of waste uh, management has to be completed by 48 hours. All the efforts to, should be made to minimize the use of the chlorinated plastic bag that has to be phased out. And there should be no secondary handling of the waste at the healthcare facility. And if they, only if the uh, common biomedical waste treatment facility is not available at a distance of 75 kilometers, only then there can be on-site treatment. Otherwise, it has to be sent to the common biomedical waste treatment facility. And the lab and the highly infectious waste has to be pre-treated on site and uh, all the bags and containers containing the segregated biomedical waste should be labeled or barcoded before it goes uh, for the final disposal through the common biomedical waste treatment facility. So the posters and placards for the biomedical waste seg segregation should be installed at the point of generation so that there is no mistake while doing the segregation and it should be done at the point of generation and not in the latter stages, there should be adequate provision of the adequate number of the color coded beans and containers at the point of generation of the biomedical waste. And the staff so involved in handling the biomedical waste should be provided with the personal protective equipment. So you can see in this uh, slide a segregation of biomedical waste with the color coded beans and containers yellow waste, red waste, blue waste, and the white waste. The white and the blue puncture proof, tamper proof containers you can see in this slide. There's a needle and the syringe destroyer at the cutter. This is though it is electrical, manual or destroyer are also available. So there are issues with the inspection and resegregation issues. You have not to do any secondary uh, segregation and all somewhere else because you are uh, increasing the risk of infection and more injuries. So just see in the slide. IEC, IEC information education and communication or the posters, the placards related to the biomedical waste management should be there at the point of the generation. Now, move on to the examples of the biomedical waste based on the categories. So, we have the four categories one is the yellow category, red category, white category, and the blue category. The four categories. So, under the yellow categories, we have the different waste that is the human anatomical waste, animal anatomical waste, soil waste. Discarded or expired or the expired medicines, chemical waste, chemical liquid waste, then discarded line and mattresses, the uh, gowns and masks, as well as the laboratory biotechnology microbiological waste. So, what do we have under the human anatomical waste? We have the waste like human tissue organs, body parts, so the fetus below the viability period comes under the human anatomical waste. So, under the animal anatomical waste, we have the animal carcasses, the body parts, the organ tissues, the and the um, waste which are generated from the animal houses. Uh, then under the soil waste we have means items that are contaminated with the blood, body fluids. Like we can have dressing, the plaster casts, cotton swabs, bags containing the residual or discarded bloods and blood components. So these are all soil waste. Then under the expired or discarded medicines we have the uh, those drugs which are expired and the if we have certain um, uh, and those cytotoxic drugs also comes under this purview, as well as if we have certain ampules or vials which are which have come or which are contaminated with the cytotoxic drugs that has also to be under this category. Then under the chemical waste, we have the chemicals which are used in the production of the biologicals and uh, the discarded disinfectants. The chemical liquid waste, which includes the uh, again the same that is the discarded disinfectants or the silver exit film developing liquid or the discarded formalin, the floor uh, cleaning, washing, floor washings, housekeeping, the disinfecting activities all these generate the liquid waste. And then there are discarded line and mattresses, beddings contaminated with blood or body fluids. And as per the recent amendments 2018. Routine mask and bound has been added. Under the microbiological, biotechnology, and other clinical labs, we have the blood bags, mind it, blood bags, lab cultures, stocks, or uh, the vaccines, the animal cell, cult cell cultures, and uh, the dishes, devices used for the cultures. 
the residual toxic all this comes under this one microbiology biotechnology and other clinical lab phase then is the under the red category we have those waste that are contaminated but that can be recyclable that can be recycled so what are those those are the tubings like the tubings bottles ib tubes sets catheters urine bags syringes without the needles and the vacuums with the with the needles cut and gloves gloves and all these tubes which can be recycled are under this red category next one is the white category under which we have the needles syringes sharps like scalpels blades all those things comes under which was the sharps which can uh, lead to puncture and cuts so these comes under white category there is the blue category under which we have glass wares and the metallic body implants so under the glass wares we can have the broken glasses the ampules the wires might it this is we have to exclude those ampules where the cytotoxic where they are contaminated with cytotoxic drugs if the ampules are contaminated contaminated with the cytotoxic waste then that has to be thrown into the yellow category or yellow bin right so the broken otherwise all other broken uh, glass wares or the ampules and the metallic body implants comes under the blue category the so next we will discuss about how to categorize the biomedical waste we have discussed and then how to segregate how to collect how to do the treatment processing and the disposal options of the biomedical waste so we already discussed there are four categories yellow red white and blue so under the yellow waste we have the human anatomical waste animal anatomical waste soil waste expired or the discarded medicines chemical waste chemical liquid waste the discarded mattresses linens beddings caps masks uh, gowns as well as we have the laboratory microbiology uh, biotechnology waste so what these yellow waste uh, these type of waste have to be thrown into the yellow colored non chlorinated plastic bags and then the human and the animal anatomical waste have to be incinerated or plasma pyrolysis or when uh, this option is not possible in the remote areas we can have the option of deep burial so this is being done in the common biomedical waste treatment facilities so the soil waste what will do to the soil waste uh, incineration or plasma pyrolysis uh, or deep burial option is there if uh, this is not possible then one can go for autoclaving or microwaving for uh, removing the infections or hydroclaving then it is called for shredding or mutilation or we have the option of sterilization and shredding and then the mind it the treated waste has to be sent for the energy recovery Uh, the expired or the discarded medicines, what we will do with that? We have to throw it into the yellow colored non chlorinated plastic bags or containers. The cytotoxic drugs or the other discarded medicines, we have to uh, try to return it to the manufacturer or we have to send it to the supplier for incineration at higher temperature, like more than 1200 degrees centigrade. Or we can send it to the common biomedical waste treatment facility, hazardous waste treatment, storage and disposal for incineration. then uh, other discarded medicines also we have to return to the manufacturer and that has to be disposed by incinerations then chemical waste what do we do with the chemical waste we have the options of incineration plasma pyrolysis or encapsulation in the hazardous waste treatment storage and treatment disposal facility what do we do with the chemical liquid waste we can't put it into the yellow bin so there has to be separate collection system leading to the effluent treatment system so mind it this chemical liquid waste or the floor washings and all what we discussed the waste they have to be pre treated before mixing with the other wastes and uh, either they can be connected to an effluent treatment plant or effluent treatment system then what about the discarded linen mattresses beddings contaminated with uh, blood or body fluids so they have to be put into the non chlorinated yellow plastic bags if sometimes the packing it is not possible to put it into this yellow bag then we can use suitable packing materials so in the recent amendments routine mask and gown has been included so what has to be done with this so we have to uh, the option is to what is the treatment facility that is incineration or plasma pyrolysis or energy recovery has to be done in case this is not possible then one can go for shredding or mutilation or sterilization and shredding then you have to send it for energy recovery or one can go for the incineration or plasma pyrolysis then what to do with the microbiology biotechnology and other and other clinical labs i uh, remember we told that that has to be pre treated 
so um, it has to be disinfected prior uh, before it is sent to the incineration this these waste has to be pre-treated so uh, they have to be kept into the uh, safe containers which are safe to autoclave or microwave or the hydroclave safe plastic bag or container so this is red because uh, this is based on the new amendments 2018 so they have to be pre-treated to sterilize with the non chlorinated chemicals on site as per the World Health Organization guidelines on safe management of waste from healthcare activities and WHO Blue Book 2014 and then it has to be sent to the incineration. Next is the red category waste. Uh, they contain the waste which can be recycled. So what we will do that have that they have to be thrown into the red colored non chlorinated plastic bags or containers. And then what do we do with it? We have to autoclave, we have to disinfect it first. So either we have to do, use autoclaving or microwaving or hydroclaving or one can go followed by shredding or mutilation to reduce its volume size and followed by sterilization and shredding. Then uh, you have to send the waste for to registered or authorized recyclers okay, for recycling and then the energy recovery and this plastics uh, can be sent to the diesel or the fuel oil or can be sent for the fuel road making. Mind it, these have not to be sent to the landfill sites. Next, what do we do with the white or the translucent uh, category? Uh, so, under that we have the waste shafts. What do we do with it? We have to keep it in the puncture proof, leak proof, tamper proof containers. So, they have to be autoclaved for dry heat sterilization followed by shredding mutilation or another option is encapsulation in metal containers or encapsulate it with cement, concrete. Uh, so that it is no more dangerous. Then uh, there are other options of shedding the water cleaving. Then send for the final disposal to arid countries or sanitary landfill or somewhere in remote areas we can have designated concrete waste sharp pit. Then the blue, what do we do with the blue uh, category waste uh, which includes the glass waste and metal body implants. They have to be kept uh, uh, or segregated into the puncture proof and leak proof boxes or containers with blue colored marking as per the biomedical waste amendment rules 2018. So what we have to do with this, we have to disinfect it and then or alternatively we can go for autoclaving or microwaving or hydroclaving. Then we have to send it for the recycling. The so next is remember all the plastic bags should be as per the base standards and as per the 2016 rules the chemical treatment should have been done with 10 percent sodium hypochlorite having 30% residual fluorine for 20 minutes but as per the biomedical waste amendment rules 2018 1 to 2% sodium hypochlorite have to be used this is the new thing so now 1 to 2% sodium hypochlorite can be used for chemical treatment so mind it the biomedical waste has to be segregated and pack it right at the point of generation only to 75 percent capacity so these are the labels for the biomedical waste containers and bags you can see the biohazard symbol there are three circles and then one inner circle total four circles so this is the biohazard symbol the label marked with biohazard and handle with care and this is a triangle which has a c inside it that is cytotoxic hazard symbol so under that it is mentioned handle with care so biomedical waste collection, labeling and transport, pack and label the waste right at the point of generation. You have to label it, to put the barcode. So what we have to label? We have to label, mind it, the label should be non-washable and it should be prominently visible and it should have, what is the waste category? How much is the quantity? The center's name and address, the contact number, and in case of emergency, where to contact and where, the receiver's name, address, phone number, and what is the date of generation, year, time and all. So all these things has to be labeled there. Then in this slide you can see uh, what are the transportation trolleys or carts that are used for the in-house transportation of biomedical waste or the intramural transportation of the biomedical waste from the point of generation to the common storage area. So you can see in the slide that the biomedical waste intramural transportation member there should be the person who is handling this should have a personal protective equipment, clothing and it should not be overloaded trolley like this and there should not be excessive spillage of the waste should be completely covered. So you can see the intramural transportation in this slide. The 
transportation of the yellow waste being done and this is the transportation of the red waste and no this should not be transported at uh, the more congested areas or route should not be taken see the biomedical waste intramural transportation this slide you can see some wrong practices like the pp coating has not been worn and uh, it is uh, not completely covered trolley or carts and then this is overloading so this is a bad practice so you see, before, uh, once it reaches the central storage area, there the biomedical waste has to be weighted. So you see the yellow waste being weighed, how much high yellow waste has been generated, how much red waste has been generated, so this has, the weight has to be taken. So you can see the next, uh, uh, this is the storage room for the biomedical waste. You can see in the different institutions uses different uh, type of uh, designs, but uh, you can see this was a picture taken by me during one inspection in Bakura where uh, three such uh, places were in a remote area this has been made uh, for the uh, storage in the premises itself. So if you see the layout of the central waste storage area, you can realize that there has to be an, an entrance which, has, uh, which should have a concrete pavement, there should be a waste washing area and then there should be a trolley bay where all the trolley should stay, then there should be a water connection and then the places for the all the different categories of waste and then there should be a drain or the outlet so the basic suggested layout of the central waste storage area see in this slide see the brad practice why because first of all this black one means the general waste general waste has not to be mixed up with the biomedical waste and uh, the trolleys are not in the trolley base and uh, how they have been placed at uh, outside of the room so that's uh, bad practice and moreover these rooms should have the labels that no other person is supposed to enter that and they should be under the lock and key of the authorized person so uh, there should be biohazard symbol so uh, this is the bad practice you can see then you can see in the slide the loading for the final disposal and documentation to the common biomedical waste treatment facilities and uh, this is the documentation being done so uh, we have already discussed that red waste if it is possible then there should be an in-house shredding of the waste to reduce its volume because it is re then it has to be sent for the recycling. So uh, you can see in this picture slide the in-house shredding and uh, it has uh, the volume has reduced significantly and they can now be sent for the recycling and this is the documentation. Now here in the slide you can see the transportation of the waste from the healthcare facility to the common biomedical waste trans uh, treatment facility where uh, the vehicle is used. You can see um, uh, this one has been taken from the booklet of the Ames New Delhi. So how they have uh, see the different, uh, they have separated here itself in the vehicle also they are separated. Uh, so this picture has been taken by uh, me. Uh, this is the picture from Bakura itself. This is from one of the institutions where the vehicle uh, is actually taking the waste from the uh, healthcare facility to the uh, common biomedical waste treatment facility which is under within the seven uh, which is within the 75 kilometers so what are the treatment and disposal technologies uh, which are adopted in the com common biomedical waste treatment facilities or uh, etc for the biomedical waste so these can uh, these are incineration which includes the double chamber pyrolytic incinerators single chamber furnaces rotary kilns chemical disinfection, wet and dry thermal treatment, microwave irradiation, uh, land disposal, inertization. You can see in this slide, autoclave, you have seen it before in your microbiology classes. So here you can see the biomedical waste destruction by double chambered incinerator. Basically what is being done in the incinerator? It's a high temperature dry oxidation process that reduces organic and combustible waste to inorganic incombustible matter and results in a very significant reduction of waste volume and weight. You can see the incinerator ash disposal being done. This is the hydroclave. The microwaving. So the water contained within the waste is rapidly heated by the microwaves and the infectious components are destroyed by heat conduction. The plasma pyrolysis gas sterilizer, then the chemical or the liquid waste should be pre treated on site using sodium hypochlorite or connected to effluent treatment plant. I already told you what percentage you have to use. We have to use 
1 to 2 percent of sodium hypochlorite. You can see sodium hypochlorite solution. This is bacillol which contains ethanol, propranolol. Then how to prepare the required chlorine concentration of sodium hypochlorite solution from the commercially available hypochlorite solution. You can see if you want to make 1 to 2 percent of chlorine uh, um, solution then from if uh, market if this is available then what volume you have to use how to how you have to mix the solution as well as water to make uh, to get the chlorine solution of the required strength so this chart can be used for that and then there's the biomedical waste liquid waste disinfection by the sodium hypochlorite you can see the effluent treatment plant for the chemical waste chemical liquid waste the biomedical waste plastic waste disinfection by the sodium hypochlorite here you can see the sharp storage disposal in remote and rural areas where the LK facilities are not linked to common biomedical waste treatment facilities. With this uh, slide you can see the sharp pit which is actually uh, made with a concrete or the cement is 1 meter, 1 meter, 1 meter width, height and length. All these you can see concrete pit. So uh, this container is, uh, this is uh, collect the sharp pit which is collected in the containers. The container is not thrown inside the pit, only the uh, content is thrown here inside this. This is possible in the remote rural areas where there uh, is no access to the nearby common biomedical waste treatment facilities. Then in the remote areas or far up places where there is no access to the common biomedical waste treatment facilities, there are deep urea pits. So where the biomedical waste uh, uh, is, uh, there are actually sandwiching. Uh, how do we sandwich the things? like? waste followed by the line then over it uh, to which we give soil then again we give the waste you see the biomedical waste getting sandwiched between the soil this is uh, the mechanism of deep burial pit and this is covered with a sheet of wire mesh embedded in the top fill so there should be a security fence around the pit so that no nobody gets uh, accidentally injured you can see the land disposal facility for rural and remote areas with population less than 5 lakhs in the municipal disposal sites, uh, uh, mind it, the healthcare waste should not be disposed on or around the open dumps. And uh, sanitary landfills are a uh, better one for uh, municipal disposal purposes because there are geological isolation of waste from the environment. There are appropriate engineering preparation before the site is ready to accept the waste. There are staff present on site to control the operations. There are organized deposits and there are daily coverage of the waste. So, if you have gone to Kolkata, uh, you can see the uh, this is for the general waste. General waste are uh, um, segregated in, in a black colored bin and that is under the municipality. So, all the black bag or bin waste shall be taken directly to the general waste storage area under the municipality or municipal dustbin. And uh, particularly in Kolkata, you might have seen this clean city campaign where there are compactor machines. Some are portable, some are stationary. So, uh, with this, uh, this general waste are actually brought down into very significant uh, volume and weight reductions. And the, uh, actually, the, this not only that, it also reduces visual pollution. Uh, pollution. So, uh, next we move on to the accident reporting. So, they can be, uh, during the biomedical waste management as well as handling, one can come across major accidents or there can be minor accidents. So, what are major accidents like? There can be toppling of the truck um, which is carrying the biomedical waste and uh, there can be accident, accidental release of the biomedical waste in any water body. There can be fire hazards, there can be blasts, there can be flooding or erosion of the deep burial pit. So it is very dangerous for uh, if there is flooding. So it gets mixed up with the domestic water which we consume. So very dangerous for those who consume. So these are all major, major accidents. Then there are certain minor accidents which is more common. Like the needle stick injuries, the splash exposure or the spillage like the mercury spillage. The, um, okay, so these are the minor accidents. So mind it, the accident reporting is now mandatory. The, this has to be done. So there is a format for accident reporting where the time, date and how it has occurred, what are the type of the waste involved in the accident and uh, all these things are what steps has been taken to elevate, what steps will be taken to prevent the recurrence and all these things are there under this accident reporting format. That will be duly signed. And now we move on to occupational safety, which is very, very important. So those uh, handling the biomedical waste must have the personal protective equipments, uh, the healthcare staffs, housekeeping staffs, they can have, sorry, the housekeeping staffs 
when they're handling or collecting the biomedical waste from the hospital they must have this personal protective equipment like the heavy duty gloves the gum boots or the safety shoes for waste collectors face mask head cap the splash proof gowns or the aprons and then the disposable gloves for the waste handlers so all these things should be worn by the housekeeping staff and those who are handling it apart from this very important thing is that all the employees which are uh, involved in this should be undergone complete employee health checkup uh, all the general health checkup should be done apart from that the immunization of the health workers of the those staffs involved in it uh, should be ensured particularly with hepatitis b as well as tetanus then this slide you can see the format for the biomedical waste register or record where you will find the place to this has to be regularly registered where there will be name and address of the healthcare facility and then uh, when is the waste generated what are the different weight of the different color coded waste categories generated each has to be mentioned by weight and then when the agency who is responsible for collecting has collected it at what time the name and signature of the waste collector as well as the name and signature of the healthcare facility staff and uh, as per the new amendment rules the annual report thing has to be done that has to be available on the website uh, within the two years from the date of publication of the biomedical waste management rules 2016 so uh, that means by 2020 this should be functional and uh, during annual reporting actually uh, uh, the report of the previous calendar year is being submitted to the next level from the healthcare facility to the state pollution control board from the state pollution control board to the central pollution control board so to the central to the, and then to the ministry so this is being done the annual report information of biomedical waste management to be submitted by the state pollution control board the pollution control committee and director general armed force medical services to the central pollution control board on or before 31st july of every year for the period from january to december of the preceding calendar year which i already told you then the very important united nations conference on environment uh, and declaration recommendations Uh, based on 1992 that is to prevent and minimize the waste production first of all you prevent the waste production or minimize it as much as possible if at all you have produced it then try to reuse as much as possible recycle the waste to the extent possible then if you can't reuse if you can't recycle and uh, then the uh, remaining waste to be treated by environmentally safe sound methods and then whatever we have treated whatever is the final residue that has to be disposed of by the landfill in confined and careful design sites so that is the un uh, un set recommendations now uh, let us summarize what is so we have to remember that there are four categories for the biomedical waste management that is uh, yellow category red category white category and the blue category so under the yellow category we have to put the human anatomical waste and the animal anatomical waste like the placenta uh, like the fetus below the period of viability like the blood bag uh, then we have the all uh, soil waste like the cotton waste the bandages the linen beddings dressings then casts expired or uh, medicine or the cytotoxic drugs all of this has to be thrown into the yellow bin these are incinerable waste under the red waste we have to put it uh, 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 these can be recycled and they have to be treated by autoclaving so under that we have the glass we have the iv tubes all the tubings those which can be recycled they are here Uh, including the gloves the iv tubes the catheters the vacuum cleaners without the needle syringe without the needles syringe without the needles and the saline bottles all this comes under this red one then the sharps including the scalpels metals needles blades they come under this white uh, puncture proof tamper proof container remember that the glass as well as the metallic body implants comes under the blue bag so the broken glass vials but remember they, that has not to be contaminated with the cytotoxic drugs once it is contaminated with cytotoxic drugs that will come into the yellow waste so 
to their after treatment are uh, sent for the uh, recycling so uh, this is what we discussed in the biomedical waste so uh, overall roles and responsibility of the healthcare facility so the roles and responsibility of the healthcare facility is the implementation of the biomedical waste rules training of the healthcare workers monitoring and reviewing of the activities related to biomedical waste handling ensuring occupational safety of the employees submission of accident and annual reports to central pollution control board or the state pollution control board and then the legal compliance these are the overall roles and responsibilities of healthcare facilities so in this slide some of the bad um, bad practices have been shown so oh, you remember what has been taught so far and you do not repeat these mistakes while uh, during internship or in future please do not repeat such mistakes in future so let the waste of the sick not contaminate the lives of the healthy you have understood today's class that's all for today's class thank you